Okay. Righteous Gentiles have a place in heaven, yes or no? Yes, 100%. So they have a place in heaven, right? For sure. And is there a difference to someone who's, who's Christian or Muslim, or does it matter what kind of Gentile they are? No, if they're doing what they're, what they're supposed to do in, in, their, in their role of like uh, helping me to fix the world. And if they're doing what they're, what they're supposed to do in, the, in, their, in their role of like uh, helping me to fix the world. And Standing that the Jewish nation has an important part in, in doing that. Standing that the Jewish nation has an important part in, in doing that. Saving Jews' life. I mean, that's what, what are we talking about in terms of righteous Gentiles? We're talking about people who save Jews. We're talking about people who are just keeping the seven law guide laws. What, what are we talking about? Okay, so people that's who true. save Jews, obviously, you're gonna. I assume you're gonna say yes. Let's just take people. No, they didn't save Jews. They're just nice, good people. Yeah. They well, why did God give us the seven law guide laws? Nice, good people who mm -hmm. are keeping. Um, Keeping seven no kind laws, or yeah, I mean, like good, good people should. Will you they should just go to reason. heaven? Why not? What Obviously about atheists? Not. Throwing atheists. that in. Atheists. Would yeah. atheists go to heaven? Yeah. So depending on what they, how do they connect their lives? Somebody who's an atheist that had, had known better, had known or had known that. An atheist that keeps the seven Noahide laws. Yeah. Oh. An atheist that keeps the seven Noahide laws. Uh, that's interesting because one of those laws is to believe, believe in God, God. <laughs> and to believe in the Jewish people <laughs> as, as the chosen nation. <laughs> to believe in the Jewish people <laughs> as, as <laughs> the chosen nation. Okay. I don't know. It's a difficult question, Jess. We, we try to uh, bring the divine message to all people. The divine uh, message. Yeah, you know, like a few years ago I had a debate. So it became a very famous debate with a Christian professor about Christianity. And uh, it was a three hours yeah. debate. And uh, after the debate finished, I started to get uh, many, many thousands of uh, Gentiles who started to listen to the rest of my lectures. After they watched the debate, they decided they want to leave Christianity. And the next step was to direct them what do they have to do in life. What's their purpose? What's the purpose of the life of the Gentiles here? The Jews, they got the Torah and a public event from God. So they know what their purpose. But how someone from Korea or India, or anywhere else in the world, how would they find out what's the purpose? Apparently, there's nobody else that can do it besides the rabbis. The rabbi has to teach the world what's the purpose of all the billions of Gentiles that live here. Since we have more than 80,000 religions and cults today, and they keep inventing new religions, uh, obviously, we have a responsibility as the Jewish nation, the chosen nation of God, to spread his word not only to Jews worldwide, also to Gentiles, as the Gemara said in a few different places. We have to be the light for the nations, and therefore we have a responsibility to teach all the Gentiles that they're not allowed to be idol worshippers, they're not allowed to make any second god and to have a god uh, uh, you know, with a son, or all kinds of statues and animals and trees and all kinds of things that they worship or the stars so since there are so many different ways of idol worshipings today our responsibility is to prevent it oh. and that's one of the seven laws of Noah Which that is they, uh, they are the Gentiles that cannot worship any idols but they have to right. just follow God right which is really what what uh, the first law is about God the unity of God it says that in order for God to have unity he had unity before he created the world. He created a world, he created diversity. People don't look alike. No, even though the facial features, features of every person is similar, but the people do not look alike. What does that mean? People do not think alike. But the common thread that unites us all is if we find the one God. Like you say, finding the one God, as we come closer and closer to, to the time where everything is exposed, Mashiach is coming, so therefore idol worship, people say, well, why do I have to worship to an idol when I could you know, I, uh, worship the God directly? It's like, you know, I like to make a joke about it. Like I say, Why do we need a middle uh, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a joke, I say. A little, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a joke, but I say, you know, uh, if you want to buy wholesale, you come to the Jewish people. Every religion took parts, components of the Jewish religion of Judaism. 
for instance, Christianity took some parts. Islam has, you know, parts of the Torah. The Torah you know, they have the, the idea of you know, is very big by them. Everyone accept, uh, took one part. So if you want to get the whole picture and get it for cheaper, come to the Jewish people. But, you know, that's just a joke. But the, the reality is, not everyone has to become Jewish, but we need all to come to, to find the common thread. And that's why I think the, the universal no-hide code is so important because it, it allows us to, to, to find that bridge, to find that commonality, that thread that unites all people. It allows us to, to unite people as one. We, as the, the nation of the book, as Muhammad called us, Muhammad, right. the founder yeah. of Islam, he called us Ama Sefer, the nation of the book. Mm -hmm. We are the one who received the Torah in a public event in front of millions of witnesses. And after the world saw that the Jews got a book from God, he took them out of Egypt and he gave them his book and he chose them to be his children and he gave them some kind of privileges that other nations never had. Many of the Gentiles and the nations, they try to copy the Jews by forming a, a form of religion. It was sometimes done by one individual who came and claimed that God gave him a book. Sometimes it was formed by the people as a cult. One way or the other, we in Judaism hold, God did not give more than one religion. He gave one, and that's it. He has one true, and he gave his true in the Torah of the Jewish nation. Right. The Torah does not only apply to Jews. It it's also a book of instructions to all the Gentiles. The Jews, it's their responsibility as, to as, spread. Uh, as Gentiles, in other words, Gentiles... As being, Gentiles, as Gentiles, exactly, as being, Gentiles. As Gentiles, they could maintain... They don't have to become Jewish. The one, the one religion that doesn't seek membership is Judaism because it's, it's very difficult to become a Jew. Well, I can tell you that in uh, almost every religion that I know, that I met people and spoke to them about their religion or learned about their religion, there is uh, something that is always in, uh, repeats in common, meaning if you're not Muslim, you don't have heaven. You must become Muslim if you want to go to heaven when you die. Same thing Christians. You have to believe in JC. If you, if you don't believe in him, you won't go to right. heaven. The only religion, to the best of my knowledge, obviously I don't know 80,000 religions and cults, but from the main one that we all know, that say to the Gentiles, you don't have to be Jewish. We are not missionaries. We're not after anyone. We don't come to persuade you and uh, convince you. We're not going to brainwash you to become Jewish. The opposite is the truth. We encourage you to stay what you are. This is the way God made you. There's nothing wrong about it. You're a human being. You were created in the image of God, and he gave you the seven laws. You have to keep the seven laws and you are considered a righteous Gentile. And when you die one day, you go to heaven, the heaven of the Gentiles, you have no obligation to convert to Judaism. However, if a Gentile agree or decided that he doesn't want to be a Gentile, he wants to convert and become a Jew, he has the right. The Torah gave this right also. But like I said, no one has to feel any pressure no one has everyone, to feel guilty if right, he doesn't do it. Right. Everyone goes to heaven if they keep the Torah. If they listen to the word of God. Right. We are the Jews. We have 613 commandments, right. even though about 70 or 80% of them doesn't apply today when we don't have the holy temple in Jerusalem. So many of them are not in effect right now. When the Messiah would come, we will go back to the 613 obligations that we have. But right now, Obviously, we still have a lot more obligation than an average Gentile has, but the Gentiles has to know the most important thing, they don't have permission to worship any other God. They have to worship only the God, the God of heaven and earth. He created the world, and he's the God of the Torah. It's described in the Torah. Judaism started when the Torah was given to the Jewish nation approximately 3,300 years ago. Christianity came 1,300 years later. And Islam, Islam came 2,000 years later. Those religions came way after Judaism already were spread all over the world. Everyone knew about it. Right. And so therefore, there's nothing new in their books that does not exist in our book unless if it's not the truth. Whatever they added later on, anything that contradicts our Torah, that means that's not the word of God. You mentioned about uh, Noachite, that Gentiles becoming observance of the seven laws. 
I one day got an email from Philippines. And uh, in Philippines, yeah. they told me that after they listened to my lectures over there, they all decided that they cannot be Christians. They want to join the real religion of God and to, to keep the laws that God said to the Gentiles. So they opened the Facebook page and they have more than, back then, two months or three months ago when they sent me that email, back then they wrote that they have more than a thousand members already in Philippines that became observance of the seven laws. I know that I have yeah. many, many other it's thousands. A, yeah, but it's actually, actually, it's a movement. Yeah, yeah two, two weeks ago I woke up six o'clock in the morning, New York time, to give, to give a lecture via Skype which is about 8 o'clock Philippines time. Oh. And we're able to communicate with the people and, and so on. But like you say, the idea is promoting the one God, promoting the unity, and promoting the diversity of people. I think culture, God, I think God created everyone different. Right. Different cultures. Some people are more emotional. Some people are more, uh, are more intellectual. Some people are more... Everyone has their... There's 70 nations... But seven laws for seven for seventy nations, all coming together as one. And seventy nations that broke the, into the, thousands, into thousands, into right. billions. Originally, well, now 70. we have we have billions of people out right, there, right, right, which originally came from seventy nations. But the seventy nations is like a generic term for non non Jew, right. which the seventy nations, as we as we know that during the time of the Beit Hamikdash, in the time of Sukkot, we actually uh, each nation brought uh, uh, a uh, paid pilgrimage and homage to the temple and and the each right. one the, the bulls and, and they the brought Jews were sacrificing it for them for, for the them. entire seven right. days for the seven days for the seven and then nations. finally the Jewish people uh, the last the, day the last Shmini was for the Jews is people. only one cow for the Jews right. all the other 70 was all for the Gentiles right. And then when, they, when the Romans destroyed the yeah, temple, the yeah. Talmud say they destroyed and they didn't know that they're actually hurting themselves. Right. They don't, we used they, they to don't make special prayers they for them. Not only that, they don't yes. realize. They didn't realize. If, if it, it says, have, uh, do, if the, the people, the non-Jews, would realize the blessings that the temple brings and the Torah and the Jewish people bring, they, they, they would guard the temple. They would send guards to actually guard the temple. But be that as it may, we're living in a time now where everyone has the opportunity to overcome their selfish instinct and to rise above and to become more a better person. So let's try, like you say, in the Philippines and right. China. But also, we, you've been, you know, we've. And the, the beauty about it is today we have Skype, so I don't have to travel 15 right. hours from Newark to into, right, into right. Tokyo and then a few hours into Manila. I could, the I world could, became you know, one neighborhood. I, I became, <laughs> we all experience everything in one, in one, in one minute. But I want to add one yes. more thing to, you know, to your words is many of the Gentiles, they are listening to us now and thinking, I'm a faithful Christian, I'm a uh, faithful Muslim, I follow religion, I pray five times a day, I love God. Why would I leave all of that and become an observant of only seven laws? So first of all, it's not exactly seven. It comes to approximately 40 altogether. But the rule is like this. There are seven main laws. Like the Jews have the Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. So they have seven main commandments. Right. But every commandment that is, is required by common sense, the Gentiles must obey. Right. Meaning... Uh, Hon honoring if your John, parents, yeah, honoring, honoring your parents, parents visiting not the to make the streets dirty, and not to hit people, yeah, not yeah. to blackmail people. This is not written in the seven commandments, right. the but it's, m it's needless to say, right. if you are a human being, you must observe all these common right. sense laws. Right. So it's much more than that. And if you're not a good person and you take advantage on people and you're violent and you do all kinds of things, even though not, they're not mentioned specifically in the seven laws, they still are judged for it. I asked once in my lecture, what is worse? Someone that does not do anything, a Gentile that is an atheist, he doesn't believe in anything, or a Gentile that follow a fake religion. You know, a religion that somebody made up, it's full of human errors. So he's following a specific book, Quran, New Testament, whatever you want to call it. And then someone that doesn't keep anything. So I leave me alone, I just do whatever I want. Who is really violating more, more rules of God? And the answer to this question is, let's try to be God for a minute. What would make you angrier? 
that someone follow a fake book, not a book that you gave, and is willing to die for that book, but it's not your book. Your book is this one. This one can predict your book. For instance, well, well, for instance, well, God's not, not uh, according to, the, to 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 some of the the rulers. Christianity and Islam is not considered idol worship. So Islam, so, no, Islam for sure not. Sure not. And Islam for sure not. not. Christianity, Christianity is a mahlok. Yes. So if it's shituf. Right, shituf. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the point is... No, no, a, but that's not okay. what I meant. That's okay, not what I meant. Okay. What I'm, I'm going to okay. make myself... Try okay. to make myself a little bit more clear. Uh, there wasn't an issue it's if it's Islam is idol worshipping or not. I right. said okay. it hundreds okay. of times in my lecture that it's or, not. Or even Christianity for that matter. But we're not talking about that. Actually, the one who goes against the book of God is the one that thinking that he's doing what God told him to do. We come and tell all the Gentiles in the world, there is only one religion to all Gentiles, whether it's Chinese, whether it's Arab, whether it's Russian, European, it doesn't matter where they are from. So the idea is that all Gentiles, as we know from the time of Sanherif, the king, yeah. they all got mixed. And you don't know for sure who is in, from Ishmael. You don't know who's an original Arab. You don't know who's an original Esav. You don't know because it's all got mixed right. in history. So therefore, all Gentiles, it's, re, it's not relevant where they're from. They all have one religion. What is it? To be an observant of the seven laws and all the common sense co uh, commandments that is required by common sense. And that's it. Any additional observing all kinds of books and fake prophets and different sons of God and all kinds of idols and anything that they add extra, it's a violation of the rules of God. And it's not something that is interested for you to do. So you have to reconsider if that's what you want. You want to follow a book thinking it's the book of God and it's not. Or you want to just fulfill your real obligation and be a righteous Gentile. I have nothing against any of these uh, religions. I, I don't know who they are. I mean, many of them, I don't even know them by name. It's nothing personal. We have to represent God exactly as he represented himself. And he gave the Torah, and he says in the Torah, will never, this Torah will never be dismissed. It will never be changed. Anyone who changed one letter from the Torah is the biggest sinner on earth. Right. And therefore, not Jews and not Gentiles has any permission to create another book to contradict the laws of the Torah, whether it applies to Jews or whether it applies to Gentiles. See, not you and not me and not Muhammad and not Chris right. and not Mr. Lee from China. None of us had any permission to modify the original text of the Torah, which is 304,805 letters. Right. If we change one letter, then we become criminals. We go again and rebel against the real God and his original book. Therefore, no one has permission to do it. All the people who came later on and claim that God sent them and they brought another book, by reviewing their books, you see it's full of thousands of human errors. It cannot be from okay. God. Plus, it contradicts right. the Torah. Right. But the idea is to not throw the baby out of the bathwater, find, find the, the, the true and ultimate religion, which is the Torah. The Torah is, is, was given like we started for the sake of peace. Its ways are peace. Or its ways, it's 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 Talmud uh, Peace and prosperity. Peace yes. and prosperity. Torah is given. Talmud Chachamim Marim the 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 uh, rabbis or the sages are there to promote peace. According to our prophets, when the Messiah would come and after the world will be purified and go back to the level of Adam before he committed the sin. And uh, that will be one of the main things that will happen in the world, that all the nations would live in peace. No more wars, no more bloodshed, no more uh, racism, no more antisemitism, mm -hmm. none of these things. There's not going to be any need for wars, even in nature, even between the tiger and the, and the yeah, goat. Yeah, the go yeah, they will yeah, live one next to another. Everything will be totally as, peaceful. As Isaiah says, Isaiah put, put it, the prophet Isaiah put it, they will prune swords, instruments of war, into plowsheds, right. instruments to bring peace. Right. No, war, no, war, no nation shall wage war against another nation. Many of the nations, when they created themselves a religion, whether it's Christianity, Islam, or others, many of them, even though, um, thank God, there are many, many Gentiles who respect Jews and love them and everything is fine, 
But on the other hand, we have those who don't. And they make all kinds of accusation and all kinds of problems and antisemitism and terrorism. So uh, my question to those people is, do you really think that this is what God wants? After you admitted that the Jews received the Torah in Mount Sinai, he gave it to you in front of the whole universe. Everybody saw that God is giving his book to the children of Israel. Yeah. He called himself the God of Israel. And he says clearly in the text, I chose you from all the nation to be my children. Right, but when he gave us the Torah, he gave the entire world the seven laws of Noah. Exactly. So they have a part as part 100%. of... hundred percent. We said that already. A hundred percent. No question about this. So, How the Torah is universal. Universal no hard code, and and that universality extends not only to to the to every non-Jew, but also to the land of Israel. That the land of Israel is a holy place, godly given, and it serves as, as a beacon for light and blessings for all people. What's the purpose of the life of the Gentiles and the seven laws they have to keep? And today, as you suggested, we should focus more on the situation in Israel, what's happening or today. The temple, the, or temp the, yeah, the, the temple, we don't have the temple. But, but, but the, the temple, the, the, how, how, the, how it serves as a blessing for all people. Right. Well, back in the time, what it says, the prophet says clearly, my house in Jerusalem, it's the house for all the Gentiles to come and to pray. And, 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 and me as a Kohen, I'll be serving right. both Jews and Jews. Maimonides, Jews 800 years yeah. ago, the most important rabbi in the last thousand years, he writes clearly, when a Gentile brings a sacrifice into the holy temple of God, you accept from him. Right. You know, even accept obviously, from obviously him before the Jews sometimes. Right, no, but obviously it has to be uh, the choice, the choice is cow and, and so on. And right, right. right. But the, the idea that the Torah, the temple, st stood as a beacon, as a lighthouse for everyone, and blessings. So it really makes no sense that people, um, it's not a blessing for, for, the, for, the, for the Palestinians or for anyone for that matter to take the, the Holy Land because it's godly given. Hashem, and the name of God. Hashem, our God, which is the true God, the God of mercy, right. God of peace, God of love. One of the main reasons for all these murders, you should know that, that there is a book that God gave to the Jews in Mount Sinai who applies also to Gentiles. Yeah. He the told Torah. them that they have to keep the seven laws and they can go to heaven as Gentiles. They don't have an obligation to be Jewish. And as results of 80,000 religions that came later on that people made up, that created a major conflict in the world that everybody is against everyone. I want to kill you because you're not a Muslim. I want to kill you because you're not a Christian. Or, or you're Muslim, uh, this, this fraction. This kind of Muslim. Uh, this guy, that, kind of, that kind of Christian. This kind and of the sad part right. is that all these agendas are all fake. None of them is really from God. Right, right. It's only one book that God gave the in Torah. a public event. The, the Torah. Torah. And that applies to all the Gentiles, right. regardless whether he's American or Syrian or Chinese. They all got the same commandments as Gentiles. And they're killing each other for nothing in the name of fake religions. That's the problem here. And this is really why we have to s promote the seven laws. But, but I think the Jewish people are the only people, the only religion that are in every single country. We've lived in Iran, Yemen, America, Europe, Africa. Wherever we, ha we, we are the only people that have survived and thrived and, and brought peace and prosperity and culture as well as the most importantly the rule of law the Torah mm -hmm. everyone even, took uh, even how to fight there, how, are, there uh, are rules uh, rules uh, yeah the Torah what, the Torah what teaches you cannot do to prison yeah, yeah, what you how cannot you? do you always have to offer them first peace one thing I think we, we can conclude this yeah, yeah. thing by, by saying one thing every Gentile who listens to us the idea is please begin to search and to start educate yourself. You as a non-Jewish person, you have the right to become a Jew, but that's not what we're here to teach you here today. You don't have an obligation. You can die as a Gentile and go to heaven of the Gentiles. All you have to do is to follow the one and only one book of God, which is the Torah. Torah in Hebrew means instructions. It's instructions for the Jewish nation. It's also instructions to all the Gentiles. 
you have to learn the seven law of Noah. You can Google it. You have it all over this website to explain uh, yeah, it. No hide. You have to be a good person. Right. You cannot hate anybody because of race, especially not the Jewish people because they are the chosen people of God. He loves them very much. Hating them is considering hating God himself because he's their father. You cannot go against the son of a person and telling the person, I love you. I love you. I have to respect your son. Even if the son is not the greatest son. It's not even the issue here right now. So therefore, you have to understand one thing. All the religions who came later are full of human errors. Check the books and see. You can check that online. You don't have to follow any specific cult or religion to become a righteous Gentile. All you have to do is to keep the seven laws of the Gentiles and be a good human being. And, and, and be, keep be honest. And do the keep integrity. integrity. Love people. Right. Be kind. And for sure you go to heaven one day. No obligation to become Jewish. If you want to convert to Judaism, you have the right. It's not easy. It's not going to be simple. You can stay what you are. The Jewish people never been a missionary nation to run after people and convince them to join them. We have our truth. You have your yeah, truth. Okay. And you have to follow your instructions. And you can do very well even without becoming a Jew. I want to thank you on that. And really, it's about spreading the light and get, getting, getting in touch, you know, being who you are and, and focusing on bringing light and bringing peace, ultimately, because peace is for everyone. I want to thank you very much. Thank you very Rabbi much. Rabbi Mizrahi, thank you and shalom. shalom. And there should be peace. And I should be able to serve you all in the holy land of Israel by the third temple today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Maimonides, who was a great scholar who lived in the Muslim countries um, of Egypt, he was actually a sultan of, of, uh, of the Egyptians. He was uh, the doctor of, for, for the Egyptian sultan back um, probably eight, nine hundred years ago. And uh, one of the things, he, one of the messages, he was a great scholar, sage, he was a great mathematician, physician, astronomer, philosopher, etc., etc. And one of the, the fundamental uh, principles, he, he, he brought down the universal Noahide code at the very end of his compendium of the entire Torah, known as the Mishnah Torah. Mishnah Torah, and he, he, one, of the, one of the objectives which he spoke about was the idea that the world is, a person has to see the world. Number one, he, he codified the entire Torah, and at the very end, he brought, about, he brought the universal laws of Noah at the last chapter. And he spoke about Messiah, and he spoke about Israel, about Shlemus Ar, it's about the, the, the completion of the land, the temple. And the reason being is that each one of these are, are interconnected, meaning, in order to have redemption, we have to keep the universal Noahide laws. In order for the world, as we know, to be able to be free of evil, is through the Torah, through Messiah, which will ultimately call, finish the process that, we, that each and every one of us has the opportunity to do. Because the message is not only for Jewish people. The message is universal. Because at the end of the day, the Jewish people are only the lighthouse. They represent the beacon, the light, the direction. Not they, in an arrogant way. The Torah. The Torah is Torah or, meaning the light of Torah. And by us embracing Torah and, and enhancing Torah and realizing that Torah is really about a living Torah, meaning it's about realizing that we have, it's dynamic. We have the ability to take something physical. We have the ability to create, bring down God onto this world, to connect the physical and the spiritual. By us connecting that physical and spiritual, we bring about redemption. Redemption for ourselves, redemption for our fellow man. And we ultimately, as Maimonides stated, redemption for the entire world. Each and every one of us could bring down and, and tip that scale. So the idea is to realize that we have the ability to bring that redemption about. We just have to focus on, 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 on positivity, po- focus on, on realizing that there's a Haman and there are challenges, 
and the darkness sometimes could seem insurmountable or the challenges could seem surreal. But at the end of the day, God doesn't play games with, with people. Meaning, if there's a challenge, then you have the ability to overcome it. If there's an obstacle, a hurdle, you have the ability to jump over it or to go around it, whatever it is, to overcome it. The idea is not to be distracted by what is, but rather what will be. And to focus on that and to bring out the goodness. And this is what the universal message of, of, of Noah taught us, of Noahide laws, which God gave to Torah, to Torah, which is part of the Torah, the light of, of, of the Torah. He gave it to, to all people. And he wants us to bring out everyone to play the part. And let's hope that by us creating that light, creating that, that, that positivity, that goodness and kindness, and going the extra mile, will bring about personal redemption, and ultimately where Hashem, Havaya, will, will shine. And the evil, the, 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 the evil that exists in the world will be eradicated. And that's ultimately when Mashiach comes, the redemption. Because that's a time when we realize, the world will realize, come to fruition, and after thousands and thousands of years, will give birth. Meaning, the world will give birth to a beautiful world. It's like a pregnancy is not fun. But ultimately, after the end of nine months, you have a beautiful child. So too. The goal is, the, 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 the exile is not fun. But ultimately, after thousands of years, we'll have redemption. And let us hope and pray that through the miracle of Queen Esther, which stood steadfast, and through Mordechai, which galvanized all the children, and they brought about positivity and 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 brought about people standing strong and not bowing and not yielding, but standing strong. And ultimately that brought about redemption. And so too now, by us standing strong, by us, us focusing on the positivity, by us looking at the good, we could ultimately bring about that redemption, our redemption and ultimately the world's redemption. So let us hope and pray that as we, 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 we get ready for this, this holiday, this great holiday of Purim, where the tables turned and victory was, was had, for we are here to prove it. All the, all the Hamans, all the, all the, the great kingdoms that have come and gone, that have sought to destroy the message, the, unti- the timeless message of Torah, are all gone. Yet we are here, and we're here celebrating that message of unity, of goodness, and divinity. And we're ultimately being able to fuse the goodness, the, the physical and the spiritual, and bring about u- universal harmony and peace and universal redemption. Because that's what it's about. Har- p- peace and harmony comes to, it brings about redemption. Because ultimately, darkness is a challenge. And we see the light, we have harmony and peace and unity. And let's hope and pray that it happens speedily in our time. And may we witness the third base of Mikdash, the third temple in, 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 in Mashiach now. The idea of Torah or, yeah, the, or, or, yeah. or godly sure. is to bring, not to, not to, yeah. is to bring the, the, the heaven onto earth. Bring Absolutely. It to, 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 yeah. to fuse both sure. heaven and earth sure. Sure. whereby yeah. we're not worried about what kind of reward am yeah. I going to get or am mm-hmm. I going to go to heaven or hell. Correct. So it's the idea of finding that, that commonality and finding that spirituality and finding the thread that unites us all, which is really about the universal laws of Noah, to, to bring that synergy, both Jew and non-Jew, creating a, a dwelling place for Hashem, for God, 
and making it a garden and bringing down heaven to earth. Making, it's not about heaven and he heaven and hell, it's about bringing heaven right now. Making heaven it, and earth. Heaven and earth. Having heaven, having a cake and eat it too, <laughs> as the saying goes. <laughs> to bring the heaven, to enjoy the, enjoy the, the physical, yeah. and to appreciate the physical. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been given insight into God's plan. Which is to make the world a, a, a better place and to refine the world. For him. For him. Because he wants a world that is comfortable to him. A world that he can live in. So instead of trying to get to heaven, which is what we've been doing for 3,000 years. Let's bring heaven to earth. Let's bring God down to earth so that he gets what he needs. We're no longer looking for what we need. And really that's what Mashiach is about. The revelation of godliness in the world. Yep. The fulfillment. The fulfillment of the, uh, the ultimate, yep. the, the way it was before the, the, the sin of Adam and Eve. Yes. Even greater than that. But you see, this, this makes so much more sense. You know, uh, if, if they say, if had, had the, uh, the Jewish people taught about the seven laws of Noah in Nazi Germany, the Holocaust wouldn't have happened. Of course, people would have felt a conscience to, to not just to march the neighbors into the gas chambers. Okay. And what kind of initiative? You and you okay. Okay. Number one, that's a political, you know, Israel and Palestine is, is politics. It's not, it has nothing to do with religion. In other words, it's, even though, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, that the reason why the Jewish people are in the land of Israel and why it's holy is because God gave it to the Jewish people. Everyone's welcome to live there, but at the end of the day, it was given by God, as it says in the first paragraph of the, of the Bible, that God created the heaven and the earth, so he, he gave it to the Jewish people. What's going on in Palestine, I don't want to go into, into uh, political over here, but there's, there's uh, you know, uh, but basically, essentially, it's a holy place, and, uh, and so on. Do I have one more question? And this is the message of Purim. Purim is a, a time... We celebrate victory, we celebrate the triumph, good over evil. So let's dig deep inside of us and let's bring out that goodness and godliness and let us all celebrate Purim in the third Beish HaMikdash, in the third temple in Jerusalem with the coming of the Messiah which will be revealed speedily in our time, which this will usher in a new era where the world as we know it will cease to exist because when, once you reveal the secret, the, light, the darkness, once you expose it for what it is, it has no power. And let's hope that that happens today and ultimately we see, we, we see and witness the, the third base of Mikdash, the third temple in Jerusalem. Speedily. I believe with the full belief of the coming of Mashiach, Messiah, which is about redemption. Redemption of the whole world. Right. And by the way, whoever is listening uh, should know. Let's say first, I'm saying it out of love. <clears throat> that from all of the Gentiles of the world, whoever wants to be a part of the redemption, a happy part, a part that would gain and receive from the godliness of the redemption, should make sure he is taking upon himself to learn the seven Noah high laws. These are the seven ways that you are preparing yourself for redemption, for Mashiach, and then you will be a vessel to receive because you don't want to, to get all of the flow and the plentiness of the, of the Geulah, of the redemption, when there is a hole in the bucket. So what it right. will help? Right. So I am advising with a full heart and a full love to every person in the world, no matter what happened yesterday, right. learn, learn exactly what are the seven Noah high laws. Laws of Noah, yeah. Yeah, and make sure that you do it not because it makes sense, because God told Moses to do it, for the whole world. Right. In other words, have a relationship, establish a relationship with God. Yeah. Talk to God by praying. Yeah. 
have a connection when you need something. There's a, to pray, to ask. If, you, if, you, if someone's sick, ask, say, uh, say, uh, say uh, Psalms and ask God for, for, uh, to heal someone. That's for sure. But I'm talking Even, uh, directly uh, right. to ask. look, to search for what is the seven no hilos and to adapt on yourself and on your family. It's it's million times taking the best insurance right. in the world. Right. So this is my advice, right, right. And, okay. full of love. Love and peace and love. Love and okay, peace, okay. okay. So, so basically, you grew up as a musician and you... I grew up as a musician and I'm a musician and, and, and I hope to merit to play in Beit HaMikdash in the Holy Temple uh, very soon. Really, by us Jewish people, we have a mission in the world. To spread uh, the peace and the love. And uh, if we don't do it, we are not okay. So the world should see that light comes to their life from us. A real light. A holy light. And this how evil will disappear from the world. When Mashiach will come and we already started the period of it. And this is part of my mission now. Right. I'm performing all over. I was in, a Hon in Hong Kong. We had a, a performance a Sunday night. So Saturday night, we went to some clubs of, uh, in Hong Kong. And then they told us that at 2 o'clock after midnight, we can go up. We, it means my brother Yossi, that his guitar playing is unbelievable. And me. And we went to play in that club. And I started to speak to them in the middle of the club with everything about the seven Noah Hilos. And uh, I taught them the, the song, We Want Mashiach Now. And we have it in a video. All of the crowd, different people with earrings and things all over the face, different countries, different colors, all of them. We want Mashiach now. We want Mashiach now. We, and we want to play another song. They don't let us. We want Mashiach. And they got to a, an ecstasy. We want Mashiach now. We, I have it in a video. If you wouldn't see it, you wouldn't believe. So, of course, I feel that music is a common language between nations, between cultures, between everything. And, you know, people are good. They are victims of where they are born and to the atmosphere that they are being brought into. So really, uh, has to be a big change in education. So he yeah. told me, that guy, that he's trying to learn Kabbalah. So I told him, oh, that's very nice. But I'll tell you the truth. You should concentrate in the seven Noah Hilos. So what I told that guy was that uh, it's very nice, but he's in the wrong channel. He should put all of his energy in learning about the seven Noah Hilos and spreading them. And this he will bring light to his life and he would live when he will be deserving miracles in his life. If he will be busy with the seven no hilos. And I opened my phone and I uh, took some things and I sent him in this. We are till now in a very, very deep relationship. And uh, he's writing to me all the time. I send him things about the seven no hilos. He's a, a, an important person in the government, by the way. He's uh, like, and uh, so this is. One of the things, you see, you are going there. People see when you look also Jewish and you look like a rabbi. So people are coming to you and people expect from you to, to hear some things. Uh, and this is our job in life. And the Rebbe, the Lubavitch Rebbe, inspired us and educated us that we are not living here in this world for ourselves. We are living for the world. And uh, every Jewish person that is doing his job, he's uh, elevating 
thousands no. of non-Jewish well, people a, a non in their lives. And non-Jews who also who, who practice the laws of Noah and don't have to become Jewish. Of course, but, but, no, but by us that, it's not but, a thing but, but, to but, become Jewish. And, and the fact is, they create a dwelling place and they get the same reward as a Jew. There's no difference between a, a Jew that does the right thing and a non-Jew. Everyone well, has the exact same reward and the exact same godly, is divided, bringing down that godly energy. That godly the, word, the word reward is a... Or, 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 it, or, wait or, a second, yeah. what? I will tell you what yeah. I mean. That for us, we have more obligations right and you uh, know there, there's a whole tribe in ghana yeah that, that, that want to become jewish they, and they wanted me to, to come speak to them i said there's no reason to become jewish god created everyone created by judaism it's it, not it, recommended it, no because no, it's it's he it created all people and everyone is unique and everyone's special mm -hmm. but, but it's all coming together as one even just like in the human body yeah. You have the human body, you have hands, feet, legs. Everyone makes up the human body to create an entire human being. Yeah. Different limbs. Yeah, yeah. So too, every every person is like a different limb. That's right. And just like you don't slap the right hand doesn't slap the left hand because it did something wrong. We have yeah. to look at the whole world as one. That's right. And if we are talking this, about this now show, this show is titled one people, one world under God. A great name. Because we are one people, meaning every person is, 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 a, is created in the divine image. Mm -hmm. Everyone is special. And God has a task and a mission for every single mm -hmm. person. And one world. We're all living on the same world. If you're living in, in New York, if you're living in Africa, the, 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 good, the, the happiness, like you said, happiness is the key. It's a life that, that exists in New York. If you're not happy in New York, you, you're not happy anyway. You, 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 of course. There's, there's a famous story of, of yeah. and we, I, we're working, you know, trying to bring peace in the United Nations. Yeah. So in the United Nations. I saw how yeah, you yeah, yeah. work there. Yeah. You give good cards yeah. to every person yeah, and good speeches. in the elevator. And good, and good speeches. And the, everyone is right. your friend right. from top until uh, the, uh, the, yeah. The front, right. So, so the, whole, the whole UN... United Nations, as well as Washington and the EU, are trying to put together a map of the world that everyone should be happy. Every country should should be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everyone's borders should be happy. And they couldn't do it. They had meeting after meeting after meeting, no avail. Finally, a little kid comes, and after ten minutes, he puts together a map of the world. Everyone's happy. Everyone, Russia is happy. America is happy. Syria is happy. Everyone's happy. What Everyone. was that? On the flip side of the map of the world was a picture of a person. So he said he just put the two eyes together, the nose, the mouth, and the whole world snapped into place. Mm -hmm. So we say macro, microcosm, macrocosm. When we see the world, when we are, uh, if Ani said Yeah, that's In other right. words, if we see the world, if we're happy, then the world is happy. As a matter of fact, you are talking about a very special point. We... No, that Not we, I'm talking about in general. No, wait a second. Right, right. We know that a person should take the responsibility of the whole world on his own shoulders. And he is like the control room of the whole world. If he has some evil wishes and he controls them, he causes that evil matters in the whole world will be controlled. If he's uh, doing goodness in the whole world, there is goodness, even by animals. Even so, a person should take on himself the total responsibility of the world, and God, that is the alti, uh, Almighty, right. He can make that everyone is as if the only driver. So, of course, if someone is doing things that are not good, he is taking the balance to the wrong side. As it says by the Rambam, that a person should uh, look... Look at the world as an equal balance. Yeah. And one good deed, one good action, could tip the scale in, in, the, in the positive direction. Of way. him and, and of the whole the world. world. So, good news. Wait, Mashiach wait. is coming. Mashiach is coming. And, and really, Mashiach is already here. But we have to merit in our deeds and in our actions in our preparing 
ourselves for him, we will uh, realize it and see it more and more till it will be clear to everybody. But uh, things are good. People should not be worried. Uh, there is a pink future very pink, soon. Pink? pink is good. Pink. In, in Hebrew, you say pink like a, a very nice. Yeah. Uh, to the other side of black, there are people that they see the world in a black color and there are people that see it in a pink color. Okay. Yeah, this is our, an expression. Yeah, expression yeah. So, how is it in English? Varod. Varod. Olam Varod. So, anyways, uh, people Any should be op optimic, optimistic, optimistic and positive. positive, and God and happy. will see that this optimism shows the confidence in Him, Sh shows that we are relying on Him, and we are realizing that everything is coming from Him. He's running the show. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. yeah. I want to thank you. We have to wrap it up. So okay. I want to thank you for your time. Very and good. And your words of wisdom, and more importantly, for your songs of inspiration. Thank you. you. inspire us and unite all cultures, which is really the human race is about coming together. I mean, we are uh, making now a show with some Arab musicians right. and uh, to show unity uh, and, and a positive. Yeah. Hashem. So, Bezrat Hashem. Uh, what would you say in, in, uh, in, in Arabic? How do you say Bezrat Hashem in Arabic? Uh, Allah, Allah okay, and uh, please God, we'll see that day where the entire world will come to recognize Hashem Echad Ushmo Echad. Amen. And Israel serves as a beacon of light mm -hmm. to the whole world where everyone comes. And people are, are looking at Israel, just want to mention this. Oh, it's Palestinian, Israel. It's about God, and God is universal. It's not about land, it's about unity, and it's about light. And the Beit HaMikdash, the Holy Temple, stand, will stand in Jerusalem for all to come and pay their pilgrimage and peace for peace and love. The time when we see the Gaul HaMikdash, Amen, it's when under it's our nose and already. And I should serve you as a Kohen. Wow. Uh, in the Beit HaMikdash, I will serve Bezrat you all Hashem. and serve you and everyone. Will be the best music uh, in the uh, world in Beit HaMikdash. Beit HaMikdash will serve you and will come and show peace and love and unity for all people. Because so Hopefully, this is a time when we're living in Mashiach times where this wisdom and joy w will permeate the entire world. And Amen. We, and we as Kohanim will serve together as, <laughs> as, as uh, not ambassadors, but, you know, uh, as priests. Public servants. Public servants. We'll serve. Yes. And let's hope that it happens today. In Amen. And uh, the world comes to fruition because this is about a process which began with the creation of Adam and Eve. Yep. As a rabbi, member of a religious community, founder and director of the Institute of No Height Code, I want to show you today that the universal No Height Code, we all talked about before, about the rule of law and how we're all the same. We are all created by God. We all created, all human beings are created in the divine image. But the bad news is that we're not all the same. That God created a collage of people, people from different faiths, different backgrounds, different cultures. Culture is about some people are more spiritual, more intellectual, some are more emotional. Everyone has a culture. It's like a body. The human body is made up of, to give an analogy of the human body, the human body is made up of a head, which is the faculties of the brain. Then you have the heart, which is the emotions. And you have different limbs that carry and, and do different functions. If you would try to say that the, the, the head that the blood should be like the heart, like the, the, the blood which is in the heart should be like in the head, or vice versa, you would destroy a, a human being. You know, everyone knows that belong, blood belongs in the heart, not in the head. If a person has, uh, God forbid, a stroke or something of that nature, then uh, you know, it's, it's a major catastrophe. So we're not all created alike, but the good news is that we all have a function to, to, to unite as one body, 
and to create that unity and diversity and, 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 to, and to have that all come together. And the Institute of Noahide Co Code, which I'm the director of as an NGO, celebrating diversity, was conceived as an opportunity to unite the world, re echoing the belief in the one God as the creator of all human beings and the belief that we are all created in the divine image. The universal Noahide laws are means which humanity can strive to live in peace and unity. The respect for family, respect for others' property, respect the, for, for, for judicial system, and respect for the cre all creatures and environments. The laws of Noah, or universal Noah code, I like to say we promote UN, which stands for universal Noah, Noahide, in the UN, in the United Nations. So it's UN for UN. It's, it's, just, it's a catchphrase we're going to use from now on. Okay? Uh, and we're going to market uh, Mr. Pico to, to promote UN in the UN, universal Noahide in the UN, which Noah basically was uh, before we were all became diverse people. Every all people come from Noah before that Adam, but we all come from the, our founding father is Noah. And these principles are a means by how you pray. Whether you're more you're more emotional, you're more intellectual, you're more you like your food high hot, you like it sweet, you like loud music, soft music, you know, whatever you like, that's, that's, but these are a foundation, the foundation. The laws of Noah, the universal Noahide code, comprise seven universal biblical binding all humanity, and in, in the United States Congress, this was recognized as Public Law 10241. On December 10th, 1948, which this organization was founded, signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. I propose that the Universal Noahide Code reflects the spirit of this document, which recognizes the rights of all human beings, and I further propose that the Universal Noahide Code deals with the responsibilities of the individual. The Noahide Code, we could spend, spend an hour or days here talking about each law, and it's not just these laws, it, it governs laws between fellow men, it has to do with how you conduct business, how you, how you say good morning to your neighbor. It has to do with a whole range of laws, visiting the sick, daring, burying the dead, etc., etc., which are not included in these laws. These are like the Ten Commandments, which are a basis, which from this many laws and, and common law, and by the way, British law or, or Western law is based on this. My intention as founder and director of Universal Noahide Code is to call all 193 UN member states that comprise this organization to incorporate in their constitutions the Universal Noahide Code. That the Universal no Noahide Ethics Day in the UN and a, and, a, and, will, and a resolution on this, which will give you a copy to hand out and to, and to review, and be passed to promote the responsibility for human beings, first of all, to their creator, and w from which this, this, this code originates, and then to his fellow human being. The Universal Noahide Code encompasses the principles of the United Nations Sustainable De Development Goals 2030 Agenda. The Universal Noahide Code, or UNC, above all, is above all politics, justice, and religious systems, or, and boundaries. It is part of all and political, judicial, and religious systems because it, it transcends from that which is man-made. All different laws are man-made. This is godly, and it's, it's a way that God gave us for us to live um, amongst the 70 nations that we don't all think alike, to all live in coexistence and harmony and peace. Israel is, belongs to the Jewish people because it says in the Bible, not because the UN made a declaration. Thousands of years, it's been King Solomon built the temple, King David, this is going back for thousands of years. Abraham walked here. Your, your grandfather, your, where you come from, is, is Abraham's. We all say that, and, and, this is a, and, and if you want to try to veer me into the political issue, I'm not going there. I'm telling you right now, because what I'm trying to prove to you over here is if we take away the political, you know, where the Democrat, Republican, this, that, we could argue and, 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 and everyone's going to be screaming until they're blue in the face and we'll never agree. Or we could take a step back and say, what do we have in common? What unites us? 
and then we could live as brothers and sisters. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead. She wants to. Okay, oh, it's after, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Daniel. I'm from Norway. Uh, we, uh, for many years, we've been a Christian country. We had a state church, but we removed this because of the growth of atheists. So the Noahide Code, the first rule is do not deny God. Then how can you expect countries such as Norway to implement this rule if you have a growing population that do not believe in Okay, Very good question. Um, in America, there was this challenge because of the separation of church and state, meaning that the government cannot, it's freedom of religion and, and the government cannot impose any religion on any people. And the, the American government had that issue between church and state and they, they, they overcame it by saying it's, it's education. The point is th they overcame it in America by, by having it promoted as, as, as education and, and, and so on. It doesn't have to say it's f respect God doesn't have to say um, you have to pray to, to in a church or in, or in, it says respect the, the higher authority. But I think if they overcame that that issue in America with church and state, I think the same same issue could could be overcome in in uh, Norway. They have to work together, and religious leaders have to come to the table and say. I've had imams here, I've had uh, Buddhist sheikhs here, I've had uh, rabbis, I've had uh, Christian scholars from all over. Everyone has come and everyone has come together on this, this issue uh, and saying that the universal no white code is 1,000% is, is what their religion teaches. So I think it's, it's just getting everyone to sit down around this table and we'll have UN in the UN, which is in the universal no white in the UN. Order. The prayer will be offered by our guest chaplain, Rabbi Kershon Afsan from Cincinnati, Ohio. Almighty God, Master of the Universe, I invoke your blessing today on the members of this honorable institution, the House of Representatives of the United States of America. May they humbly serve their constituencies, aware that creating just legislation is one of the seven laws that you, Almighty God, gave all humanity through Noah as detailed in Genesis. Almighty God, as a descendant of Hasidic Jews who fled the Stalinist regime that persecuted religious observance, I am especially grateful and blessed to be in America, the country called the nation of kindness by the great spiritual leader of our generation, the Lubavitcher Rebbe Melech HaMoshiach, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. We thank you for the freedom we have here to practice our faith and we pray for those who still suffer persecution around the world. While legislating by definition includes differences of opinion and rigorous debate, I pray that we nevertheless anticipate our shared bright future in the time of the redemption and thus remain one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. A prophecy from Isaiah. 10, where it talks about a perfect world, the world when Mashiach will come, when the Messiah will arrive. And it talks about the world when the wolf and the lamb will dwell together, a world that everyone would love each other, that the knowledge of God will be everywhere. I was getting ready to read that. I was excited to read that because the world needs to be a better world. We need to welcome a new era that we have been praying for for 2,000 years. And so the question is, what is the solution? What is the answer to that? So I want to share with you that I recently uncovered a speech that my dear Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, teaches to millions, including myself. He penned this speech 32 years ago to be read right here at the United Nations. And the Rebbe writes about the power of the United Nations. All of you here have been given by God an opportunity to make a difference in the world. And the Rebbe taught us something very poignant, that indeed, when the world was repopulated, after the flood with Noah, God 
gave seven laws called the Noahite laws. This is the bedrock of any civilization that were to exist. And the Rebbe pleaded, if only the United Nations will go back to the basics and empower their nation to adopt the seven Noahite laws, then this world would be a very different world, and perhaps we, we wouldn't have lost 150 million lives that we have lost in the last 200 years. So I ask every nation that's here, everyone that's listening, consider taking the seven Noahite laws back to the basics and apply it to real daily life, and we will see a world difference. Our children are our future. We need to truly reevaluate how we are educating our children. Children need to have a moment of reflection every single day, or perhaps a moment of silence, to think that they have been created by God, that they are an image of God, and that they need to realize that there is a supreme being, and that truly there's an eye that sees and ear that hears everything that they do. If we give children that opportunity, then perhaps these children will grow up with more meaning and more responsibility. He shall judge among nations, he shall rebuke many people, I quote. He shall, they shall beat their swords into plowsheds, their spears into pruning books. Nation shall not lift swords against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Very exciting. And it's inscribed right outside this building, facing the United Nations headquarters. And now it serves as a frame of reference. This is a frame of reference, essentially, as a basis where we all agree on. We can all agree whether it's whether it's Muslim, whether it's Christian, whether it's Buddha. We can all agree that our thing. We all came from Noah. And these are essentially how you find the path. There's seven different nations, essentially, and there's seven different paths. But essentially, um, we all create it, and we all have that, that uniqueness about it. Judaism, just to share that, uh, of the Abrahamic religions, as well as the Eastern religions, Noah served as a, as a role model to carry humanity afloat during very turbulent times, which the flood was. Judaism teaches us that the prophecies, that the old prophecies will, will, will be fulfilled. In other words, universal peace will arrive. When and how depends on, our, on us, on our actions. We can we can it has in it, we can make it come sooner, depending on how we behave. Prophecies relating to our political wars are a warning. The only as a warning serve if we do not heed to know our code. Because if we do not find common ground, then it's obviously going to be um, unfortunately um, but regardless of this, I'm so proud to tell you that uh, we have new president, American president. He's a great man. He's concerned in helping uh, in these issues as well. I talked to him several times. I was a member of his uh, campaign elections. I'm talking about uh, Donald Trump. And I'm confident uh, as soon as he passed inaugurations, we will have some tools to promote our ideas uh, through our government, including our Congress. And I promise very soon we will have an amazing event, a meeting with Congressman Danny Donovan, who is the only congressman from New York City representing our uh, city in Congress as a Republican. And he is very close to our elected president. He has already expressed his interest in issues which you are talking about, and he will make his own contribution in our movement. It's no doubt. Okay, we will have right after December 10 meeting with him. Okay, he promised to give us the date, maybe today, tomorrow. I want to first pick up on Rabbi Cohen's words of Ben Zoma. So, as I remember it, Rabbi, what a chacham is, is also one who aroes hanolet, somebody who sees the future. And I think what we have here today, and part of the reason we're here today, and have the pleasure of being here today, is because of the saintly actions of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, of Vashalom, Zohar Tzadik Levracha, who really is the person, the place where all of this comes from. If you follow back in the days of President Carter, uh, during the birth of the, the, birth, the rabbi's birthday, the Lubavitcher Rabbi's birthday, um, 
he focused on the idea of education. And as a result of that, he most recently has today come to the point where there are 5,000 individuals in different Chabad houses throughout the world who actually preach education. And he, his focus has been on education, and this is why, in part, we're here. And I think, without mentioning that at this conference, we would be remiss. So I'd like to start with that. The Rebbe said that a child's character education should be take priority over his academic education. All educational efforts, he said, are meaningless unless built on the solid foundation of good character. And at the end of the day, that's what education is about. How we slice it doesn't really matter. And I, I, I suggest to you that today that uh, when he is quoted, the Rebbe is quoted as saying uh, to a 12-year-old parent, um, how, do you, how shall I educate my 12-year-old? And what the Rebbe is quoted as saying is that you're 12 years late in coming here. What you have to do is you have to start from the very beginning. A child needs education from not adulthood, but from birth. And how we perceive the world and how we go forward is really the question that we are presented with here today. If we are to achieve peace, if we are to achieve a Noahite solution, it could only be with one way, and that is that we educate children from the very beginning, from birth, and those values, those in, internal values, need to be in, in, invested and inculcated, I guess, into each child as soon as possible. And I think at the end of the day, that part of that education has to focus on integrity and, of course, respect. And, of course, at the end of the day, that education has to come only one way, and that is with love and affection. And if we can achieve that, I think we will achieve a much better world uh, in the years ahead. Thank you very much. Sending his greetings, love and regards to you. First of all, no height laws are the main principles that we all agree. Uh, these, uh, we can confirm that laws of Noah are in accordance with Islam, and a righteous Muslim is also a follower of Prophet Noah, peace be upon him. Islam is the religion of peace. Only when freed, when freed from the fabricated hadith and traditional interpretation of the bigots. The events that are unfolding before our eyes today is staggering. No one knows the numbers. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands, maybe millions, we don't, just don't know, of B'nai Noach, of people who are coming to the Jewish faith all over the world. It's an amazing thing. This never happened in history. There were always unique individuals like this, but it happened where this, they're flowing in with such numbers. It's, it's really is something completely shocking. It's very strange. Tomorrow, Mamish, in 24 hours from now, there'll be tens of thousands of Christians who'll be marching right here in Yerushalayim. Despite what people think, they're not a monolithic group. They're all evangelical Christians. They all love Israel, and they do. So they all believe that the covenant that God made with the Jewish people is eternal, and the land of Israel belongs to the people of Israel, and God has kept his promise, and we have returned. And Genesis chapter 12, verse 3 stands like a rock. That those who bless Israel will be blessed, and those who curse Israel, chas will be cursed in your name. All the peoples of the earth, all the families of the earth will be blessed. They believe that, every one of them. However, there is some variance. They're all very into Jewish things. Today, if you want to be a big hit in your, in a, I know we said in your church, in a church, so the more Jewish things you do, the more interesting it is. Oh, give a look, there are pastors coming out, in their congregation, wearing a talus and tefill, they're wearing a strimal and a begotcha. The Jew, more Jewish, that part I made up. The more Jewish it is, the better. If he could come out with 14 yarmulkes on his head and like this, coming out like this, with chauffeurs blowing, this is, this is the best thing in the world. His membership will shoot up completely. So they're, they're all that. People are drawn to anything Jewish. Are not so happy with the Noahide movement. They're not going, ah, what a pleasure that there are Noahides. This is the biggest joy in my life. I never had such a, a pleasant idea that there should be B'nai Noach or there should be people who are choosing the Jewish faith. Why? 
because virtually the entire so-called Noachite movement, almost all of them, are former evangelical Christians. Who today are walking around saying, I'm a Ben Noach? Who do you think? They daven with Hillary Clinton in, in a high church Episcopalian church? You think Hillary is a, is a chance that Chelsea... Would, no, this is not going to come from there. And they're not, they're not former Hindus who used to pray to Hanuman, the monkey god. Maybe a few, but not too many. And they're not, generally speaking, they're not coming from the Greek Orthodox Church or any of the Orthodox churches. And they're gener generally not coming from the Roman Catholic Church, from the Western Church, from the Latin Church. Almost all of them are coming from the evangelical, conservative, born-again Christians. And these are people who have studied the Christian religion. They were originally drawn to the Messianic movement from their other churches they came from, whether they were Baptists or charismatic churches like the Assemblies of God. And then he knows, oh, give a look, there's a Messianic movement. They're doing things Jewish. They're doing things in Hebrew. This is the way Jesus would have done it. And they get involved in the Messianic movement, but it doesn't take them too long. They are spiritually sensitive enough to figure out that there's no theological difference between what the Baptists believe and what the Messianic movement believes. There's no difference really between what a charismatic church like the Assemblies of God believes and what a, a Messianic congregation in Philadelphia called Kenaina Hara, what they believe. <laughs> Usually, so they're not so happy with the Noah. And they say something, these Christians say something that has to be, of all the things that Christians say, this has to be one of the oddest, oh, that's ridiculous. No, that's not true. It's not one of the, no, the oddest thing is, is, is 1 Corinthians eleven twenty four 24 in Luke, 2219, that you should eat the body and drink the blood of the Messiah. That's pretty much the nuttiest thing. But it's close to that. In that they say that this, the whole Noahide movement, just the rabbis invented it. This is a rabbinic thing. It's, there's no such thing. There never was such a thing. And the rabbis made up the whole, this whole thing. And if you watched the pulse of this movement, you can tell they're always going, there's whole videos, the Noahides, the rabbis made up Noahides, and so on. And it's really quite a shocking statement because if there were no laws given to Adam Rishon, carried on through Noach, his son, Shem, Avram, if there were no laws prior to the giving of the Torah in the year 2448, what exactly did the people of Sodom do wrong? The Hasidi Umus Oilam play a central role in the Messianic age. The entire end of Sefer Zechariah, the book of Zechariah, is really devoted to the, to the people, to the Umus Oilam that come to the Jewish people. Zechariah chapter 8. Ten Gentiles of different nations will grab the shirt of a Jew and say, take us with you, because now we know that God is with you. I had a Christian once say to me that, don't take the hem of a Jew, that's Jesus. But I said, you didn't look at the you, because in English, you, you can't tell if it's one or many, but Hebrew doesn't work exactly that way, and it, it's you all. <laughs> the Hebrew is you all, is not one person. Nebuch, if a person reads scripture, in English, let alone the wonderful King James Bible, well, then you might as well. You're in huge trouble. It's, it's not that translations sort of lose the color. Translations are treason. They're a commentary at best. If you, if you even try, your, if you reading a translation, it, at best you're kissing God through a towel. People wonder, I know this is on the minds of so many dear people who've come to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They're perplexed by the status of B'nai Noah. And to them, I know they're thinking this has to be kind of a, a Judaism light. This has to be something, what's so special about it? Why is so important? You know, the end of Zechariah, the Haftarah, the opening, the Haftarah of the opening of Sukkot, the last chapter of Zechariah, it's all devoted to the nations of the world. The whole world will know. Zechariah 14, verse 9, the closing passage of the Elenu, it says, Venemar, that's a quote directly from the Sefer Zechariah. The whole end of Zechariah is about the nations of the world. 
In fact, not only in Zechariah, but throughout the Nevi'im, it's about all the nations will flow at Yerushalayim. Yerushalayim. The nations are going to come here. And as you heard before, the role of the Mashiach is to give rebuke, to give haychacha, to be the teacher to the world. That's it. You're not a miracle man. He might do miracles. Never in Tanakh does it say Mashiach is going to do a miracle. This was very bothersome to the church because in the Christian Bible, Jesus is doing miracles everywhere. He's a miracle here, miracle there. Oh, he's doing miracles, miracle. Pick a card, which card? I don't know. He's doing miracles. But the truth is, there's nothing remotely right. There's nowhere in Tanakh that you see such a thing. In Tanakh, is that he will rebuke the nations. He'll be a teacher. He won't judge people after the sight of his eyes, but if the spirit that's been placed upon him, Isaiah chapter 11. So literally, in the Christian Bible, Luke in particular, I'm thinking of Luke chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18, Jesus, we are told, goes into a shul, a synagogue, on the Shabbat, and he reads from the Haftarah, and he's reading from Isaiah chapter 61, where the Isaiah is talking in the first person. But he talks about that I'm here to bring the good news, Besaris Tavis, and so on and so forth, and to give freedom and so on. And it says there to give sight to the blind. If you're reading Luke chapter 4, verse 16 through 18, it says to provide sight to the blind. If you go back to Isaiah 61, it's Mamash not there. Luke interpolated that passage to make it look like the Messiah is supposed to be a healer. By the way, I'm not saying that the Mashiach will not do miracles. Maybe he will, but it's very clear Tanakh is not interested in it. And it's very clear that Luke is trying to line up Tanakh and interpolate the Jewish scriptures in order to make it look like that's a central feature of what the Messiah is supposed to do. I have heard Christians say to me that it's in the Septuagint. It is. People say to me, it's in the Septuagint. Jesus was reading from the Septuagint. Could you just plot? Could you imagine this? Listen to me. Either I'm nuts or the world is crazy. <laughs> You're telling me that the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity, is going, you know, I, I know this is a Hebrew Bible, but the, the heaven, no, an English transla- Greek translation, rather, like the Holy Spirit going, you know, I haven't written a book in 500 years <laughs> since Malachi. It's been a while. My Hebrew is a little rusty. Let's go to Septuagint. I mean, how preposterous. How do you change the Word of God? And if you're going to alter the Jewish scriptures, you think I'm going to get baptized and destroy my relationship with my people, more importantly, my God? So, kindleach, children who are born from above, not from below. Why is it that the, that those who become, going to use B'nai Noach, are so core important to the world, to HaKadosh Baruch Hu's plan for mankind. I mean, it could be argued very easily that the role of the Jew is to be an Orla Goyim, Isaiah 42, verse 6, 49, verse 6. That's our job. If we're supposed to be an Or, to who? To the non-Jews. That's our whole purpose. It could be argued that Jews are here to facilitate that the non-Jews would come to know the God of Israel. That's what we're here for. We're here to facilitate the Noahide movement. In fact, before the Ten Commandments are given, immediately before, we are told that the Jewish people are an Amsagula, a chosen people. For what reason? To be the kind, to be a priest of the world. If we are the, the Kaihanim of the world, who are our congregants? The nations of the world. It is so simple. Kili kal We only find that term twice in all of Tanakh. The world belongs to me, and your job is to be Kaihanim to the world. So why, why is it so special to be a Noachide? It seems to be that Noachide is, at first glance, is Judaism 1.0, and being, and converting to Jew, or being born a Jew, that's Judaism 2.0. And so what does God think about all this? How is it possible, how is it shy that this is so important to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that all the kings, all the nations are going to come to your shalim. And that's the big thing. We're living in an amazing time. I believe, it seems to me very clear, it's not that Mashiach is closed. People are saying that. I think that it's here already. That means we are already in a process of Mashiach. I believe, this is just my view. Chassim, I don't know. We're living in a time now that already it's here. It's happening. It's simply a process that is unfolding. Why is it taking so long? Why is it Yiddish ice schlepped? As it turns out that every 
time that the nation of Israel is redeemed, it never happens in a second. It always happens over a stretch of time. I respect you, respect me. doesn't have to respect you. Huh? doesn't have to respect you. That is the right thing. Are you Jewish? Do you want to honor God? That is the godly thing to do. We respect one another. The godly thing to do is to kill you. The godly thing is to kill me. That's right. That's yes? what the Torah says. The Torah says to kill us. The Torah says that I don't, uh, people who worship idols such as yourself, when there is a Sanhedrin... To kill us. Yes. Okay. That's what the Torah so says. So we know how the Jewish people feel about Christians, yes? That you Christians discriminate are, against Christians. Christians are idol worshippers. You discriminate the against Christians. The Torah says that Christianity is idol worship. Let me ask you. You worship three Let gods. me ask you. Okay. As it is explained by uh, the Ramban in the Hidushim to Masechet Makoth Daf, Daf Teth, and as it is explained by other Rishonim, the assumption is when it comes to a non-Jew who we do not know, someone we haven't met or we don't know much about him, the assumption is that he does not live according to the Sheva Miswoth B'nai Noach. He doesn't keep the seven Noahide laws. And therefore, essentially, this person is Hayav Mitha. He's guilty of a capital offense, whether it's this one or that one, whether it's stealing or, or adultery or murder or Avodah Zarah or what, what have you. Avodah Zarah, of course, was perhaps the most common, the most standard, the most uh, ubiquitous Avera, which you could also see with your own eyes, not one of those activities which people tend to uh, do behind closed doors. It was a well-known fact. These people worship Abu Dazara. So that already, according to the Sheva Miswoth Menach, makes that person liable for the punishment of Mitha, of being put to death. However, you can't just put a person to death without bringing him before a court. Dosh Baruch Hu is telling you, you have to make a choice. Either you're 100% with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, or you're with the rest of the garbage of the world. Right now we have almost 8 billion people in the world. 99.999% of them are Reshaim Gmurim. Christians, almost two and a half billion of them, all idolaters. What do you think? Kadosh Bukhus thinks it's Tadikim? And so the President of the United States defending the rights of the unborn <laughs> and, and, evo and, and, and invoking God eight times. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I am by quoting of scripture. All this Noahide business, too. Yeah, get you over guys, it. Get guys, guys, over the Noahide. Guys, let me tell you something about the Noahide. Mm -hmm. Get over it. You guys need to look at Sharia laws. The Sharia law is. <laughs> it, read what a Sharia. We don't even have to read Sharia law. Mm -hmm. Watch what the people who believe in Sharia law do to people. They cut their heads off. Mm -hmm. And they've been killing and murdering and abusing and raping and, and, and slaughtering innocent people. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting around twiddling our thumbs over mm -hmm. something that's never going to, it has nothing. It's, it's a very less than 2% mm -hmm. of the Jewish, a Jewish sect. It's less than 2%. Hiding in a corner over and there. And that Jewish sect actually went and attended, uh, what was the guy's name that got droned? Kwasam Sol Solomini. Yes, that sect that uh, is against Noahide laws went and attended his funeral. So you might want to pay attention to who you're supporting. Yeah, so guys, don't worry about the Noahide laws. This is a, did you ever hear of Flat Earth, the Mandela Effect? This is about the same thing. It's going nowhere. It has nowhere to go. The real problem you have is the beast kingdom that's going to rise. I mean, I have to just tell you the truth because there's so much of this garbage out there on the Internet that uh, people are confused by. And, it, and they really do. They get confused. Just stay focused. Study your Bible. It'll tell you the truth. And stay focused. The Jews are not your problem. <laughs> Satan's your problem. Okay? The devil himself. And he is bold. And he is coming after the unborn. He's coming after the believers in Christ. He's coming after the Jewish state of Israel. He's coming after everything that has to do with the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming Messiah. My television show, Heidi, that airs tonight uh, back home at 10 p.m. Eastern across America on World Harvest Television, mm -hmm. plus several other television channels, and all week long, 
is called The Coming Messiah. And I'm interviewing, it's part two of my interview with Rabbi uh, Yuval Ovadia. Yes. But it is really good because we break down the signs of the coming of the Lord. Okay. And yeah, we disagree, obviously, when it comes to Messiah. But we agree that the biblical prophecies are pointing us that we're in the last days. We're in the end times. What you have to do is you have to study the Bible and then study the, the events unfolding. And then that will show you. But you said a key, key thing right there. Don't just run over it. You no. have to study to show yourself approved. Thank you. You know, and that's why when I say things about mm -hmm. Noahide law, mm -hmm. you notice something mm -hmm. I've known about this Noahide law thing for two years. I've not even spoken about, it. you know why it doesn't match the biblical prophecies. You have to study Jews, to show yourself approved. Jews slaughtering people is nowhere in this Bible mm -hmm. as the end time prophecy. Nope. Nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. It is a false narrative. It is a fake narrative. And even if there is a few loose cannon rabbis running around, believe me, this isn't the thought process of the people of Israel. This is not the thought process of the Jewish people. No. So what we do here, Heidi and I, is we stop, we take steps back. The people who hate Jews, the anti-Semitics who hate Jews, also hate Christians. They start out by hating Jews, and then they turn on the church. Watch what I'm telling you. Every person, there's people out there who say they're part of the body of Christ. They attack the Jews, attack the Jews, attack the Jews, and then you know who they turn on next? You. They turn on the Christians. Because if you Christians don't do what they say or follow their ideal of thinking, they turn on you. And they begin to blame you and say that you're a partner, and that you're some kind of uh, Zionist, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they lump you in. Guess what? Guess who's going to do that in the last days? Study your Bible. Who's going to go after the Jews and the Christians in the end time? Who is it, Heidi? Who's going to make war with the saints and the holy people? The Antichrist. So this narrative you're hearing is actually the Antichrist doctrine coming from the lips of those who say they are a part of the body of Christ. I'm sorry, but it won't. It don't match the Bible that matches maybe Albert Pike or some other weird writing, but it doesn't match the Bible. And that's why we at Public Prophecy Ministries preach the truth. Stick to the Bible. Stick to the Bible. Stick to the Bible. It's easy. Mm -hmm. Stay with it. <laughs> זה לא קרה אלפיים שנה. המשמעות של זה היא שאלוהים רוצה שנביא משיח, אלוהים רוצה שנבנה את בית המקדש. ומדלגים, אתה יודע, עושים פשוט סילוק לאחור של כל, ה, כל ההגבלות של התלמוד על מה זה משיח. והם חוזרים לרמב״ם, והרמב״ם אומר, מה ההבדל בין ימ... אין הבדל בין ימות המשיח, אין בין ימינו ובין המשיח, אלא שיעבוד מלכויות בלבד. זאת אומרת, כל מה שמפריד בין ימיו של הרמב״ם, הוא מת ב-1204, ובין ימות המשיח, ההבדל היחיד זה מי כפוף למי. האם היהודים משועבדים על ידי המלכויות, על ידי העמים האחרים, או שהם יכולים לשעבד עמים אחרים. וזה עכשיו, ובזה הוא פותח את ספר המלכים שלו. הוא מסביר מה זה הלכות מלך, מה המלך יכול לעשות. זה נובע מהתפיסה שכן, יכול להיות מלך. אתה לא חייב קודם כל שיהיה בית מקדש. אתה לא חייב שקודם כל אירועי אלוהים ירד ויצביע, זה המשיח. אתה יכול שיהיה מלך, ואם הוא מנצח, אז הוא גם יהיה משיח. כי הוא באופן כללי, מה שהציונות הדתית בעצם מדברת עליו, ארץ ישראל ליהודים בלבד. עכשיו, המצב של הנוצרים מצד שני, באמת יהיה רע. זאת אומרת, הם עובדי אלילים, ואפשר, וצריך להראות אותם גם אם הם לא לוחמים. עכשיו, כל ה... יש בירושלים מנהג בזוי של בחורי ישיבות ללכת להשתין או לחרבן מכנסיות? אתה הולך לשם, אתה מדבר עם אנשים מכנסיות, אתה תשמע את זה מכל כנסייה. יריקות על אנשי, כמור... על אנשי כמורה ברחוב? זה קורה, זה קורה בעקביות. אם הכומר מעז להחזיר, זאת אומרת, מוריד סטירה או משהו, אז מגרשים אותו בשקט. מבטלים את האישור, את האישור שהייה שלו בארץ. אם אתה רוצה להצדיק פוגרום, רק תגיד אם הם יהיו מיסיונרים. ומהבחינה הזאת, הנוצרות, שהיא האויב ההיסטורי של היהדות, הולכת, מה זה לחטוף? כשהציונות הדתית עלה לשלטון. 
האוונגליסטים שנותנים להם כסף כנראה לא מבינים עם מה הם מתעסקים. אבל, אתה יודע, זה באמת הפוקס על בוף יור האוסס. This conspiracy theory presumes a great deal about the orthodox Jewish influence on global politics and is rooted in a great deal of anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist sentiment certainly extending back to the late 19th century. So, the, the, right, this is a distinction, that, Jew, that Christianity is a universal, universalistic religion, right? Yeah. The idea is that, it, that in the kingdom of God, everyone is Christian, basically. And Judaism is not in one sense, but it is in another, which is that God identifies a nation that he treasures as his own, and he has a special relationship with that nation, but Judaism is not exclusivist with regard to who gets into heaven. So there's this, there's this basic idea in, uh, in Genesis that there are commandments that are given prior to the giving of the Torah. Right, mm-hmm. there's the, what we call the Sheva Mitzvah Pnei Noach, the seven commandments that are given to the sons of Noah, meaning all mankind. And these are things like no murder, no idolatry, no adultery. They basically mirror a lot of the Ten Commandments. And so the idea in Judaism is that God, it's almost like a priestly caste. God chose this specific group of people to be a light unto the nations by demonstrating what a godly lifestyle looks like if you dedicate every aspect of your life to God. And then he said to everybody else, I know not everybody else is up to this, and, I, and in fact, Judaism are supposed to try and turn away converts, But if you, but you can still get into heaven. The idea that that we are trying to force anyone into into being Jewish that that's not a thing. So nationalism without well, the you, conversion. Well, you can think about that psychologically as an attempt to both manage the preservation of group identity. Mm-hmm. So that would be culture, a cultural right. identity which has some utility, and also to be able to coexist with others who are right. doing things in a different way. And again, Judaism has had a, a long history of of. just like every other religion, of sort of evolution on this stuff. Right? Like when you read the book, of jo- the book of Joshua, there's actual forced conversion that happens in the book of Joshua. Mm-hmm. But by the time you get to uh, mid, early Christianity and midpoint Judaism, right, because Judaism is a lot older than Christianity, then you're already talking about Jews who are not looking to convert people. Uh, they sort of want to live in their own state. Uh, they don't want to bother anyone else for the most part. Uh, so the idea of like a tidal wave of conquering Jews going out, I mean, even to think about it now is hilarious, right? right. Nobody thinks about it that mm-hmm. way, except mm-hmm. if you're right. a conspiratorial nutbag. שיקבלו עליהם שבע מצוות בני נוח. אני רואה בשביל מה אתה קורא להם לשלום? שב בבית. מה זה היציאה הזאת למלחמה? אבל זה מצוות עשה של תורה, כמו שיש מצוות עשה לפגוש את ארץ ישראל. יש מצוות מלחמת רשות, יש שם מצוות, אה? שופט אותו, מעניש אותו. אבל... אצל גויים שהם אינם שומרים שבע מצוות אלו, אף כבר לא תרצח ולא לא תגזול ולא זה, קוראים להם לשלום, הכוונה, אתם מקבלים שבע מצוות? אז אנחנו עוזבים אתכם בחיים, אם לא, וצרת עליה, ואתה הורג את כל זכורה, לפי חרב, ורק את הנשים אתה משאיר, ואיך אתה משאיר אותן? הם כולם צריכים לקבל על עצמם את השבע מצוות ואז אתה משליט את שבע המצוות באותה עיר. ופה כרגע שאלו, אנחנו אין לנו כוח להילחם, אבל אנחנו... מי אמר לכם שיש לך כוח או לא? הקדוש ברוך הוא, הוא נותן לך כוח לעשות חיים, ולכן הוא זה שציווה ללכת מעיר לעיר, לכבוש אותך, ולהשליט את שבע המצוות בעולם. זה תפקידו של מלך המשיח בין השאר. לא ברק עם השנייה, וכמובן לקיים את המצוות הללו. הוא יכבוש עיר אחת, שם שומרים של המצוות. יכבוש את עיראק, את טורקיה, יגיע גם לאיראן, ישליט בכל המקומות האלה של המצוות בני נוח. אבל הוא ישליט זה לא במשפטים, אלא במלחמה. במלחמה, במלחמה צריכה להיות, לא דווקא להרוג, אלא להפך. הוא אומר להם, אני קורא לכם לשלום. אז אם מרים את הדגל, אומרים מעכשיו אין נצרות, אין אסלאם, המסגדים והצריכים של הנוצרים, הצדדים יורדים, מעכשיו בשורים של המצוות אינו. 
זה תפקידו של מלך המשיח, להביא את העולם כולו למציאות של שבע מצוות. אז זה לא עניין למשפטים, זה עניין לביצוע. פשוטו כמשמעו. ולכן אומר הרמב״ם, שאם אתה פוגש בן אדם ברחוב, שאין לנו שומר שבע מצוות, אתה, ככה הוא אומר, אם יש לנו כוח, אתה רוצה להרוג אותו, אתה רוצה להרוג אותו. Have you ever heard about the Noahide laws? Well, I, I learned about them as a Jewish man growing up and then talking to the rabbis as a Jewish follower of Jesus. And, and they said, look, for the goyim, for the, for the nations, for the Gentiles, there are seven laws they need to follow. Uh, there, there are laws against blasphemy, laws against uh, idolatry, you know, cursing God, laws against theft and murder and, and adultery, and laws to establish courts of justice. And, even one dietary law, not, not to eat the, the limb of a, of, of a live animal and, you know, th- things like that. So, so the Noahide laws, that's for the Gentiles. Now, where do they get them from? Well, the rabbis derive them partly from Genesis 2, the commands from God to Adam, and partly from Genesis 9. Uh, most you could find plainly in the biblical text, and we just would affirm, yeah, you shouldn't commit adultery, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't blaspheme God, etc. All right, you should establish courts of law, that's all good. But it's by rabbinic interpretation that they're drawn from Genesis 2, Genesis 9. But there is a myth circulating today. It is a myth, and I want to shout it from the rooftops that it's a myth, that religious Jews are working with various world governments to impose the Noahide laws, at which point they will say, Christians are idolaters, Christians are idol worshipers because they believe in a trinity and believe Jesus is God, and based on the Noahide laws, they should be put to death so that religious Jews working with world governments will have Christians put to death under the Noahide laws. Forget that. It's nonsense. Christians are being put to death every day for their faith. And yes, religious Jews oppose the gospel of Jesus, especially going to Jewish people specifically. And on top of that, there are some religious Jews, there's a debate, who believe that Christians are idol worshipers because of the Trinity, and others say, no, it's acceptable for Gentiles. But listen, do not believe the myth that is circulating like wildfire on the internet, that Jewish groups are working with world governments to impose the Noahide laws with the goal then of establishing them so that Christians will be beheaded as idolaters. Forget it. That is nonsense. That is false. It is not to be believed, but it's provoking people to fear. It's not part of what Noahide practitioners believe. A controversy that, to me, having followed this for decades, is a fairly new controversy, or at least it has sprung to light through the internet and other means. And we're going to talk about it today. The so-called seven laws of Noah, the Noahide laws, are, are they good? Are they bad? Do they pose a threat for Christians? What do we make of this? Here's Karen in Florida. Welcome to the line of fire. Well, thank you, Dr. Brown. Um, I have a question on the seven Noahide laws. Um, and there's a, a couple on YouTube. I think they're a Messianic couple who are uh, talking about the dangers of the Noahide laws and that uh, President Trump has endorsed uh, the Noahide laws. And if you read closely, it could mean that Christians could possibly be beheaded. Yeah. And um, there, there are actual several sites right now that are really um, talking about this. So I, I really wanted to know what you, what yeah. your opinion on all this. All right. So I answered by saying there's more truth to the idea that Santa Claus delivered presents to every child in America and that Elvis Presley and Michael Jackson are teaming up do a concert, then that Christian's going to be beheaded. של פסולת שיוצאת מהקיבה של בני האדם, 
וחתולים, וכלבים, ואריות ונמרים, רותחת, מבעבעת, שמה שמים אותו, שמה הוא נענש ככה כל רגע ורגע. זה חבל, את זה לא הבאתם, אה? כל הכנסיות, כל הצלבים שלהם, הצלב הגדול הזה על הארו בברזיל, מתפוצץ לרסיסים, לכל העולם, וכולם יראו את זה. כולם יראו את זה. ולהוציא את השקר של כולם החוצה. את השקר של הנצרות הזאת החוצה, שבשם כביכול בורא עולם, בשם כביכול יש לו כתפיים מרחבות, הוא לוקח את העוונות של כולם. של כולם, את העוונות של כולם הוא ייקח. שום דבר, כולכם תהיו נקיים, כולכם תבואו לשתף שם בנגל. איזה שטויות, כמה דפר בן אדם יכול להיות, כמה סתום בלום, כמה דביל ומפגר, אין מילים אחרות. בן אדם יכול להיות בשביל להאמין לשטות המפגרת הזאת.